The Hawkeye Swarm returns Saturday, and so do fans. It won't be a typical opening game as Iowa jumps right into conference play. 17th-ranked Hoosiers and 18th-ranked Hawkeyes. John Sears begins our team coverage from Iowa City. There's no easing into the college football season for the Hawkeyes. No low-level tune-up game. 17th-ranked Indiana visits Kinnick Stadium on Saturday. Iowa has dreams of a Big Ten title. A conference top 20 win in game one makes that dream a little more real. I do like the challenge because I feel like it um, makes me know where we are as a team and know where I am individually. Um, I think it builds character um, and it's going to set the tone for the rest of the season for us. So I think it's very important. I mean, we're going to come out gunning. Um, you know, in some ways it's kind of a faceless opponent, but you know, in another way we have to, you know, game plan and adjust to things that they do specifically. And with them being a top 20 opponent, um, we just have to bring our A game. This urgency started in the summer, you know, just workouts, just knowing who we have and, you know, the start that we had last year, you know, a sense of urgency in the summer and into the fall camp that we need to get going. Anytime you play a Big Ten team, you know it's going to be a hard fought game and it's going to be competitive. So I think we're excited. You know, it's a great opportunity for our team. and. I know we're embracing the challenge and uh, we're excited to play. The last time Iowa lost to Indiana at Kinnick Stadium, Spencer Petrus was seven years old, 2007. We'll see if number seven can lead the Hawkeyes to a win on Saturday. In Iowa City, I'm John Sears. Now here's Mark Freund with the Cyclones. The excitement of a finally here game week is magnified in Ames with expectations of a potentially historic season for this Iowa State bunch. But because the first game has never been a gimme in the Campbell era, it's as business right away as it will be all season. We have a lot of returners, a lot of experience, and we know like what we're supposed to do and what we're capable of. So that's good, you know, understanding that going into game one where I feel like in the years past we sort of didn't have that understanding. There are a lot of question marks. I remember from that game going in, like, what's our offense really about? You know, who's really playing these certain spots? And now that we have some more of those questions answered, it gives us some more of a sense of uh, just calmness and control. There's been times where we've been ready for the early start of the season, and maybe there's times where we thought we were ready, but maybe we weren't. And so, um, you know, I, I think you diligently work really hard to try to put yourself and your team in the best position to, to get ready for the start of the season. Campbell acknowledged the importance of in-state rivalry games, saying, quote, they mean something. And UNI has certainly meant something as it pertains to Campbell's journey. It was after a loss to the Panthers in 2016, in which Campbell said it was time to stop disappointing the Iowa State fan base. Then in 2019, when expectations began to rise, it was a triple overtime game against UNI that checked those expectations just a little bit. Campbell says you cannot bring your B or C game in games like this, or you'll get beat. Expect Iowa State's A game on Saturday. At Jack Trice Stadium, Mark Freund, WHO 13 Sports. Thanks, guys. Panthers and Cyclones from Jack Trice Stadium now officially sold out. In 11 days, Iowa plays at Iowa State. It's a rivalry series some think could be in jeopardy. The alliance creates uncertainty. We will honor current contracts. You mentioned Iowa State. We have a contract with them through 2025. That's just factual. Uh, I, I think the Iowa, Iowa State Cyhawk matchup is good for our state, good for college football, college athletics. That being said, I can't predict the future. Ugh. 